All right, here we go. Sorry, took me a minute to get set up the way I wanted to. But today we are starting our trip. All right, so. So, yes, if you need to shoot paper, don't have to shoot paper out, make sure you get one out. We are going to take some of our own notes today. Um, so, is there anybody else that needs issue paper that doesn't have one? So, trip. And there's a whole class that you could take that goes over trigonometry. Um, but we do start some of the basics in geometry because when we're talking about trigonometry, we are talking about triangles. And yeah, we talk all about triangles. Geometry. So, there are three main trigonometric ratios. Let me just I'll call them trig ratios. But again, they are sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to spell them out first. So we have sine, we have cosine, and we have tangent. Now, they do also have their own abbreviations. And you've probably seen the abbreviations on your calculator before. Sine is abbreviated S I N. Cosine is abbreviated C O S. And tangent is abbreviated T A N. Again, you are still saying the same all the time. It's sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, these abbreviations, they're actually a ratio. And every single angle measure, you could take the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of any angle. Again, since we're focused on triangles, specifically right triangles, we are only going to look at angle measures between zero and 90 degrees. All right. So for sine, you're always going to end up taking the sine of an angle. So I'm going to put a symbol up here. This symbol is theta, usually represents an angle. All right. So it's a Greek letter, which is an angle. And sine is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And then tangents equal to the opposite leg. Over the adjacent leg. Most of the time, we will abbreviate these using letters. So I'm going to draw a triangle up here. Actually, before I label that triangle, let me do a abbreviation first. Um, and a little ahead of myself with the triangle. So we have sine. We have opposite leg over hypotenuse. Okay. A lot of times we'll just abbreviate this as, and I'll call instead of using theta, most of the time we'll get, end up using some type of variable. So I'm going to call it x. So sign x, and we'll need to say like, O. Over H or cosine 
of x is a over h. And the tangent of x is o over a. Again, it still represents the exact same thing, but most of the time, again, we agree. Now, there is a way to memorize those abbreviations, all right? And it's public place. So I'm going to write out one way, you know, which is so the toe. So the toe. Using the first letter from each one of those values. So we have sine and opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. And that's what these represent. I could write it again and actually throw some symbols in there. So, again, it's no control. It's just the first letter of each one of those. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, people have also come up with sayings, many different sayings, as to how to memorize this. One of the sayings, the one that I learned when I was in high school, and one I still use every year, is this Some old hippie taught another hippie tripping on acid. <laughs> Again, that's how my Teacher taught it when I was in high school, and same thing. So, some old hippie taught another hippie tripping on acid. I'm not writing that out, but okay, it'll stick with you. Alright, so. What does that mean in our actual triangle? So we have a right triangle, all right? I drew a right triangle up here at the top. If I call this angle X over here, so there's X. Well, we have three different sides. When we're labeling the triangle, we have to label it based off of whatever angle we're using. So in this case, I said we're doing sine, cosine, and tangent of X. So, on this triangle, well, first we should know what the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse is the side that's across from the right angle, so along the side. So our hypotenuse is over here. Then the opposite side. So what side is opposite of x? So if this is x, we're going across from it. This would be opposite. All right, so that'd be our opposite leg. Adjacent means what again? Next to. So the leg that's next to X would be our adjacent leg. Now, what happens if I have that same triangle but I put X on the top? Does it stay the same? So let's say I put X up here instead. Does it stay in the same spots? Is this still hypotenuse opposite and adjacent? And now that I put X up there, hypotenuse is adjacent because hypotenuse is across the right angle. But is this still opposite of X? No, it should now be adjacent. This would now be opposite. So labeling your triangle depends on which angle you're using. And if you use the same triangle for more than one problem, you might have to relabel it for the next problem. Again, it all depends on what angle you are using. All right? Based on the angle. Now, I did write this on the board as well, so Katoa, because again, that's something that you should memorize, but it's something that we're going to be using time and time again in this chapter. Any questions so far? Let's keep moving. Anybody still need this before I get rid of it? 
triangle drawn two different times here. Right. In the first triangle, I have on the first one, we have a triangle ABC. Now I did this as a three, four, five triangle because we know three, four, five does make a right triangle. We have sine of A. Well, based off of angle A, I need to label this figure. So just like I did in the last example, which one of those pieces is going to be my hypotenuse? Five. All right. So five is my hypotenuse. Which side is opposite of A? Three. What side is adjacent to A? Yes. When I say opposite and adjacent, I'm always talking about opposite leg, adjacent leg. I'll never use opposite or adjacent where the hypotenuse is. So now that we have those pieces labeled. If I'm doing sine of A, well, sine, and if you need to, you can write out Sokotoa each time to help you out. So, uh, Toa. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. Now, we got Sokotoa. Now, sine is which two parts? Sine is opposite and hypotenuse. So what was our opposite? Three. So we set up our fraction. Three over our hypotenuse is three over five. That's our answer. All right. Again, we're just setting it up for now. We are going to use this to solve the missing pieces and solve the missing angles, but for right now, we're just doing seven. So we're setting up our ratios. Remember, a ratio is just comparing two sides. So now, for cosine of A, all right, cosine. Well, cosine is adjacent and hypotenuse. So adjacent is what? So four over five, good. So now tangent. Well, again, looking at my so toe down here at the bottom, TOA tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite again is three, adjacent is four, good. Now, on this one, I switch it around a little bit. Same triangle. Same exact triangle, labeled the same way. But am I still keeping the hypotenuse, the opposite, and adjacent in the same place? And now I want sine, cosine, tangent of B. So when I label the triangle this time, you know it's exactly the same using angle B. So over here, I use A. Over here now, I'm using B. The hypotenuse doesn't move, the hypotenuse is still crossing the right angle. But which one's now my opposite? Four, because it's across from D. Three, then it'd be my adjacent. Good. So we have sine of B, cosine of B, and tangent of B. And now I'm using the labels that I did this time around. So sine of B, what's that going to look like? What over what? Four over five. Cosine of B. What's that going to look like? Three over five. And tangent of B. Now, a couple things you should know. First, sine and cosine in every single triangle, since we're only doing this in right triangles. And we're only going to use the acute angle of a right triangle to do this. Well, if we're only using the acute angles in a right triangle, 
sine and cosine will never be more than one. Your answer or your ratio will always have to fall between the values of zero and one. And that's because what number goes on the bottom every single time for sine and cosine? Our hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is what compared to all the other sides? The biggest, the longest side, right? So if we're taking the biggest number and putting it on the bottom, can we ever have a number greater than one? No. So yeah, for sine and cosine, if you actually were to divide that out, you should get a number that falls between zero and one. Tangent, on the other hand, it can be greater than one because on this one, we have three over four. This one was four over three. If the longest side is on top, that one can be greater than one. But sine and cosine should never have a value greater than one. All right. The other thing that you should notice here, since I use the exact same triangle, there's some things that are similar on both of these, right? In fact, we have values that are equal. Sine of A was equal to what over here? Sine of A was equal to what on the other side? Cosine of B. Cosine of A was equal to? Sine of B. Now, tangent of A and tangent of B, they're not equal. But what do we call those? The flip. What do we call it when we flip the fraction? Reciprocal. Yeah. So. Right, so those two are reciprocal with one another. All right. This happened because in the same triangle. The adjacent and the opposite sides are going to switch whenever you have the opposite angle, right? So there is a rule that you do need to be familiar with. When we're dealing with right triangles, first off, we know that the two acute angles in a right triangle always have to add up to what? This is from earlier. Acute angles always have to add up to. Okay, they all have to add up to right angle 90. All right, so they all have to add up to 90. So the two acute angles always have to add up to 90. They're always going to be complements of one another. So whenever we are looking at sine and cosine, and they normally do always ask at least a couple of questions on the FSA with this one. Knowing what the equivalent value is. Is important. So if I said I had sine of, and I give you a number instead of a letter, sine of 30. Sine of 30 would be equal to what? So what would be its equivalent? So sine of 30 would be equal to cosine of. So sine of 30 would be equal to the cosine of. 60 because they're complements. If we had them in the same triangle together, they'd be the two angles that would go together, right? So if I gave you sine of 10, what's the complement to 10? 80. So sine of 10 would be equal to cosine of 80. So there's a rule. The, I'm going to write this down and you should write this rule down. The sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So, examples sine of thirty. Example now. That 30 equals cosine of 60. Uh, sine of 10 would be equal to cosine of 70. Right, and so, so those values that are complements, okay, sine of 1, cosine of complement, they have to be equal. So this was set up, basic rule, 
Now we are going to do some other things we're going to have to solve and plug into the topic. So does everybody have a topic? I guess no, but yeah, anyway. All right. What I'd like you to do, because I would like you to try this on both your phone and your topic, because if you don't have a calculator normally at home, then we're probably going to use your phone when we do your homework. So I want you to try it on both. So I'm going to come around with calculators. Please have out your phone. If you have a calculator, take that out. If you don't, I'll give you a calculator in a minute, but have both your phone and your calculator. I Wow, thank you. Is that what I said out loud too? I, I said it right, but wrote it wrong. Yeah, so I said sine of 10 is equal to the cosine of 80. And for some reason, I wrote 70. Thank you for catching that. Yeah. So sine of 10 is equal to the cosine of 80 because 70, sorry, uh, 10 and 80 add up to 90. Now, as we do this next part, first thing I want to run through is on your calculators, and again, every calculator is different. So, on these last couple problems where I actually wrote an angle on here. You notice I put a degree, right? Well, on our calculators, there are actually more than one way to do an angle measure. So we need to ensure that our calculators are in what we call degree mode. So each calculator is a little bit different on the way you get there. Most of them have a button at the top that says DRG. You ever see a button on the calculator that says DRG? Anybody have a copy that doesn't have DRG at the top? Okay. All right. So if you have one that doesn't have DRG at the top, then most likely you have a button that says mode somewhere towards the top. If you didn't have DRG, do you have mode? If you do, in mode, usually the first option is to change it between degrees, radians, and gradients. All right. And that's what the DRG stands for there. So if you hit that button a couple times, you'll see at the top, it's going to change between DEG, staying for degrees, RAD, staying for radians, and then G, uh, what's the abbreviation of the gradients? GRD, or maybe even GRAD. So it depends on the copy of what they use for that. But that will allow you to change back and forth between those three different functions. Now, you want it in degree mode. If your calculator is in the wrong mode, when you go to use the calculator in this section, your answer is going to be wrong. No matter how well you did the work, if you type it in to your calculator in the wrong mode, you're not going to get the right answer. So you need to be careful and always double check to make sure it's in degree mode before you start any problem. We will talk about radians a little bit, um, but not yet. So right now, Everything needs to be in degree mode. All right, let's move on to the next screen. So, first 
first thing I want you to do, I want you to find sine of 45, 30, and 60, and cosine of 45, 30, and 60. So take a minute, plug those into your calculator, and see what you get. See if you can get an answer for each of those. Yeah. Sine, cosine, and tan. Sorry, I didn't have you guys the tan. sine, cosine of each of those. Yes, come on. Take a minute. You're just putting it into your gap there. You will get decimals for every single one of those answers. So I want you guys to try because each person's calculator is going to be different depending on which calculator you got. So. Yep. Can somebody tell me what they got for that first answer? Point seven. Yeah, so you got 0.707. We're going to just write it off to three. Three's fine. Three decimal is more than that. All right, the point seven zero seven. That would be the correct answer. Now, if you didn't get point seven zero seven, there could be a couple different issues. If you got, let's see, what is it? You got 0 0.85, that means your calculator is in radians. Again, you should try this on both your calculator and your cell phone to make sure you can get the correct value. But 0.707 would be the correct answer for degrees. All right, what about 30? What was the sign of 30? What was it? 0.5. All right, what about for sine of 60? 0.866. All right. Now, what about cosine of 45? And then it's on top. What'd you get for cosine of 30? <laughs> and cosine of 60 was again, I gave you values that were complements sine of 45, cosine of 45. Once you found sine of 45, you should know that cosine of 45 is going to be the same thing. Sine of 60 is 0.5, cosine of 60 would be the same as that sine of 30. Uh, sine of 60 and cosine of 30. Again, also the same thing. Now, I did do approximations here because that's how most of your calculators gave it to you. Did anybody plug into the calculator and get something that looked like this? Did anybody get those instead and plug them in? No? All right. 
That's fine. Again, for this other problem, I would expect you guys to get a decimal, but there are some calculators that do simplify radicals and stuff and give you an exact value. So um, now, is it possible that they could ask you for an exact value on some of these? It's possible. But they would have to give you something like the 40, the 60, the 30s, because then we could use these triangles that we had yesterday. All right. If you wanted to get an exact value for a 45 degree, not, not like a 45 degree, 45. let me try it again. Or a 30, 69. So we had a problem from yesterday. If you just plug in one for all your x values, you'd end up with something that looks like this. Could you find these ratios? Yeah. You, you already know what the patterns are for those. So you could actually solve and get them with a calculator. Again, most of this will be with a calculator in this section. There are certain things like the setup that we did on the last page. That would be without a calculator. Um, from this point on, you probably just have a calculator. So. Let's For the next one. So now, solving for some missing pieces. Right? I have two different triangles here, and I have an angle that's missing. I need to solve for that missing angle. So, how do we solve for it? Huh? I have an angle that's late, right? That's what I need to solve for. This X. What parts do I have labeled? So five is what part of that triangle? Their hypotenuse. The three is what part of the triangle? Opposite. So now we need to look at Sokotoa again. I have opposite and I have hypotenuse. Which one of these ratios includes both opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So sine has opposite and hypotenuse. Every time we do a problem like this where we're solving for a missing piece, you have to identify which one of the ratios you're going to use. The way you identify is based on what pieces you have labeled. So here we have two pieces labeled. We have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that's going to be sine. So we're going to do sine of the angle, so sine of x equals opposite, which is three over five. So now, just like addition has an opposite of subtraction, multiplication has an opposite of division, square root has an opposite of squaring, sine is like any other function that we would do. We have an opposite for it. The opposite of sine is what we call inverse sine. If you look at your calculator, you'll see probably just above wherever you see sine and maybe green or whatever color, just depending on what copy you have. If I have something that says sine to the negative one, that's how we get rid of sine. We're going to undo that operation. So x is going to be equal to the inverse sine of. Three fifths. So taking the inverse sign of both sides, when we take the inverse sign over here, it cancels off sign. So now we're just taking the inverse sign of the other side. And this is how we're going to get a answer for that angle. So plug into your cap there. See what you get. Yeah, make sure it's in degree mode. Okay, and I got there. You might have to type in the number first. 
You might have to back down. Sorry, bro. Point six now. All right, anybody think they got the correct answer? I'll tell you, it's in the 30s. So, the correct answer here is 36. Oops. Let's see what that is. 36.8. And I'm just going to write out some two decimal places. Let me accept Now, there are lots of things that you have to make sure because although you get to use your calculator on a good portion of this, because you get to use your calculator when you're going to get the right answer. You have to know how to plug it in. Yeah. Right? So, depending on your calculator, there might be different ways to plug it in. But we're taking the inverse sine of three fifths. If you have, if you have this calculator, it just has a single line entry. So you could do three fifths first. And if you wanted to just do three divided by five, and then hit enter, so you have it as a decimal, which would be point, point 0.6. Then take the inverse of that. So second sum of that. You should get that answer. I heard some of you guys talking about fractions. You can also use this calculator and type in as a fraction. If a key on there that says A, B slash C. So you could do five, hit that button, three, wait, wait, I gotta do that upside down. Sorry, three, that button, five, so it's three fifths. And then do second sign, and the inverse of sign. Wait, second Yep, second. So again, that's where we have that little inverse. If you have a calculator that's more like this, where you have like multiple lines, then you might be typing in inverse sign first. So it might be second sign and then type your fraction or your decimal. But this is your correct answer no matter what calculator you use. Any questions there? Anybody not getting this answer? Okay. So for this one, we have uh, we can do this one. So I can say five divided by seven. Three divided by five first. And then second sign. Or you can type it in as three over five. Anybody else have questions? Let me demonstrate. All right. On the other one, right? we have 10 and 8. So now, see if you can get that value for that x. Well, 
with our answer. Same thing. We've got the same exact value. Now, on this one, do we have sine? No. So when you label this one, this was adjacent to sine. This was hypotenuse. So instead of sine, you're using cosine. So now we have cosine of x equals 8 over 10. So now when we do this problem, we're doing the inverse cosine of 8 over 10, which gives us the same answer. Right? I chose this, this problem because these and these, those are actually our two, two R triples. It's the same triple R three, four, five, just double on this one. So they're proportional. So we should have had, if we had proportional sides, they're similar triangles, the angle should have ended up being the same. Right. All right. I wanted to do one more problem, but we're pretty much out of time. I am not giving you guys any homeworks tonight or this weekend. Uh, I will say this, stay warm this weekend. Um, if you're going to gas don't, don't suggest going on boats. It's very windy. ones you still know. early ones all right well give me a number like what the worksheet number is i have right here seven dash six very first one i gave out let's see here yeah. seven four seven five that's this one seven three what was the other one? So two. 